Hey friends, so I have some awesome cool gunslinger knowledge for you. As you can see, I am at Fire Drums 2019 and uh, we're here on Sunday morning as they are wrapping up. And yesterday I taught a workshop on gunslinger flowers and hybrids. And there was a really cool bit of math information that I dropped on the class that I'd like to share with you guys right now. Drex here from DrexFactor.com and today we are talking about the mathematics of gunslinger hybrids. Oh boy. Before we dive in, I just want to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So friends, we are in lovely Calaveras County, California for Fire Drums 2019, and I think this is either my ninth or my tenth year. I'm not actually sure which one. I kind of lost track. And as you can hear, my voice is a little bit froggy because I've been having way too much fun this weekend. But one of the more fun things that I did was teaching a gunslingers class, uh, which I happened to drop a little bit of math into that class that I found was really helpful for understanding how you do things like hybrids with gunslingers. As we all know, one of my favorite types of tricks are these bad boys, anti-brids, and this particular one is Static Spin versus Triketra. Now, um, uh, many, many years ago, I wrote a long-winded math paper about the mathematics of how we understand poi flowers. Uh, you can check that out at a link that I will leave in the description of this video. But the long short of it is, is that um, when we use trigonometry to model poi patterns, what we're doing is we're talking about the oscillations of two different objects in space. Let me decode that. Basically, I have my hand creating a circle around my shoulder, and I have the poi creating a circle around my hand, yeah? Now, when we talk about this in a Cartesian space, that is a space that has an up and a down and a side to side, we are also talking about a space in which when I'm doing that triketra, there are two moments where the poi head is beneath my hand. Check it out. One, two. One, two, so we would call a triketra a two downbeat move. Now things get a little weird when we take this into gunslinger land because all of a sudden we're dealing with a poi that is half as long as the one that we're used to using the triketra on. And when that happens, if I try doing a two downbeat move, doing a hand circle that big suddenly no longer makes sense. The poi is whipping around in a bunch of different directions. But if I try doing it in a smaller circle, it makes a lot more sense. Interesting. So inside of hybrids, uh, I found something kind of interesting in that when you play around with, say, an isolation versus cat eye or a static spin versus triketra, the distance that the poi that's doing the triketra is covering as you're completing the triketra divided by the distance covered by the poi doing the static spin winds up being the exact same number if you're doing cat eye versus isolation or static spin versus triketra. I called these natural hybrids because they, there seemed to be a kind of proportion that was working there between these different, uh, between these different tricks. And it turns out that the natural hybrids also work in gunslinger land, but you have to tweak the math a little bit. Now, um, Let's say for the sake of argument that I'm working with a static spin on one hand and I'm going to work with a gunslinger grip on the other hand, right? Now, we've already covered the fact that trying to do a triketra with a short poi like this is kind of a lesson in either frustration or futility. Two downbeat move doesn't seem to work here. Now, what if we changed up the equation so that it is instead ooh, a four downbeat move? Canonism going around here. Basically what I'm doing here is instead of doing a triketra, which is a two downbeat, now that I have halved the length of the poi, I'm doing a four downbeat flower. This is a five petal flower instead of a two petal flower. And all of a sudden, everything feels nice and natural again. How about that? Now we can try the same thing with that isolation versus cat eye, in which case it's a really uncomfortable move to try and do that with a poi that's half as long. But what if, say, since the cat eye is a one downbeat move, what if instead I do a two downbeat move? And all of a sudden it makes sense again, and it becomes an isolation versus triketra. Now here's where the math gets kind of funky, because remember, when we're working with gunslingers, there's two ends to it, right? So when I'm doing that four downbeat move, it winds up having ten total pedals, because each end is doing five pedals in itself, and since there's two of them superimposed together, 
it winds up being a total of 10 pedals, right? Now this totally works with a static spin. So the funky math here is it turns out if we want to use these natural hybrids in a gunslinger space, we have to double the number of downbeats. And since there's two ends to the poi, we also then have to double the number, the number of pedals. So the equivalent of a static spin versus triketra in gunslinger land is going to be a, wait for it, 10 pedal gunslinger versus static spin. And, of course, if we want to do that isolation versus cat eye, we're now going to do a two downbeat move, which in gunslinger land, remember, is a triketra. But since there's two ends, it winds up being a six pedal move. So we get isolation versus six pedal gunslinger, or we get static spin versus ten pedal gunslinger. It seems like it doesn't really mesh up, but you gotta keep in mind the number of downbeats here. Remember, to do a 10 pedal gunslinger, each side is doing five pedals, right? Five pedals is a four downbeat move. Once we've had the length of the poi, we're basically taking a two downbeat move and turning it into a four downbeat move. And that's how we can keep track of it across the way. Cool. So that might be some fun poi math for those of you guys who are playing around with your gunslingers. Uh, and for those of you who just would like to learn from me in person like these wonderful people at Fire Drums got to this weekend, guess what? I'm going out on another tour. At the end of June, I'm going to be headed through Philadelphia, Hartford, Boston, Albany, and New York City. You can learn all about these awesome tour stops by heading to drexfactor.com slash upcoming events. Get to come learn from me in person. Now, if you dug this video and you'd like to see more like it in the future, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. It turns out this is actually really important. If you don't hit that notification bell, it might not actually send you my videos. So make sure that you do that. I upload two videos a week, and by doing that, you get to see each and every one of them. Isn't that awesome? I also just wanted to put a massive thank you out there to all of my awesome supporters on Patreon, because you guys are the reason that this video and every video on my channel exists. If uh, you would like to sign up to support the work that I'm doing, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi, and thank you so much in advance. So clearly, gunslingers are a particular branch of the tech poi family tree that I've been going very deep down in the past couple years. I'm curious, what are some other branches that you guys are working on? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and of course, check out the other videos that I have up on this channel. Thanks so much for watching, and have yourselves a good one. Peace.